the heartbeat of competition, the drama of the moment. This is NASCAR on Nick Blam Racing. We're here at the Great American Speedway just outside of Dallas, Texas for a roundup like you've never seen before. Welcome race fans to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series running of the Samsung Radio Shack 500 here on McLam Racing. I'm your commentator and driver of the number 83 Napa Auto Parts racing machine for Team Chaos Racing, Mikey McLam. And in the four year history of this career mode, there have been four different winners at this very track who will saddle up and ride off into victory lane in year five. We're just moments away from finding out because when the green flag drops, the best drivers in America will go door to door at 200 miles per hour. So let's go trackside. From row three are the Ganassi Racing Dodge and the 24 car. The fourth row has the Target Dodge and the Napa Auto Part Chevrolet. Starting the race from row five will be the Kodak Chevrolet and the Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge. In row six, we have the 46 car and the Motorcraft Ford. Starting from row seven will be the 98 car and the low Chevrolet. In the eighth row are the 145 car and the Dale Jr. Chevrolet. In the ninth row, we have the 12 car and the Haviland Ford. In the 10th row are the Kellogg Chevrolet and the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Starting the race from row 11 are the DeWalt Power Tools Ford and the 161 car. The 12th row has the Valvoline Pontiac and the Sitco Ford. Starting the race from row 13 will be the Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge and the Singular Wireless Chevrolet. In row 14 we have the 143 car and the Mark Martin Ford. Starting from row 15 will be the 63 car and the Home Depot Pontiac. In the 16th row are the M&M's Pontiac and the America Online Chevrolet. In the 17th row are the Tide Ford and the Rubbermaid Ford. In the 18th row are the 26 car and the GM Goodrich Service Plus Chevrolet. Starting the race from row 19 are the Caterpillar Dodge and the 27 car. The 20th row has the 16 car and the 2 car. Starting the race from row 21 will be the Square D Chevrolet and the Sprint Dodge. And finally, starting from the rear of the field will be the UAW Delphi Chevrolet. DW, it's not a barbecue, but it's a heck of a Texas party. Reach up there, pull those belts tight one more time. Boogity, boogity, boogity. 
buggity! Let's go racing! First lap is complete as we're about to go boogie down into turn one. Dale Jarrett just kind of threw it around us in turn <laughs> number three. Got around us really easy there now. Hayes is on the outside trying to battle for the second position. It looks like he's dropped back. Now we're having to contend with Sterling Marlin here in the 40. As Dale Jarrett is probably just going to check completely out. He's already seven tenths of a second ahead of us. We got to back up turn one a whole lot just so we don't get loose going into the turn. That was one of the problems that I had during practice was just getting extremely loose going into turn number one. And I had to back it up. Whoa! <laughs> Sterling Marlin almost loses it up the racetrack. Had this have been a a little bit narrower of a track if this had been maybe perhaps Charlotte or something that would have been catastrophic he would have went right in the wall you see we got really loose going into the turn there it looks like Marlon's gonna have the advantage coming off of the turn we're just we're a bit too loose to kind of try to fight back on the outside one of the things that is true to Texas Motor Speedway is that it is a very much a single mutt, a single groove racetrack. I don't know what I was about to say there. A single Monday, I guess. Single mutt. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, we're really loose going into turn one. But Jonathan try, try, trying to get by on the inside, kind of keep the door closed there. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna be aggressive to try to block these, block these runs from the in on the inside but I I kind of know that I'm not going to be able to finish very well here I'm just kind of hanging on these guys are just they're much faster than me oh boy. All right. okay drop back into fifth position after Bill Elliott takes over fourth now we got Mike Brown to contend with here okay not going to race him as hard as I did at Bristol. Ooh, got to go on that apron a little bit there. Here comes Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman looking to the inside. Yes, I understand. We're slower than the leader. Well, the leader is currently Dale Jarrett. I don't think anyone's faster than him right now. Yeah, see, so we've got decent speed. We just can't really... Oh, we got a smoker up ahead. Uh, couldn't see who that was. Doesn't look like we gained any position, so that was not someone that was ahead of us on the track position-wise. We'll find out at the end of the race who that was. Who blew up. Well, lap six. Oh, man. I shot up the racetrack there. I was not meaning to get into Mike Brown. The 125 car seems to have fallen way back. I don't see him anymore. I don't see him in the mirror, nor do I see him in the leaderboard. But we lost the sixth position to Jimmy Johnson, trying to work our way around him once again. We're going to be battling side by side. Oh, Jimmy, you got to slide up that racetrack. Got to give me some more room than that, buddy. Ooh. That was close, real tight off turn number two. Turn number two is really tight. If you're not if you're not prepared for it, that wall will creep up on you very quickly. All right, we do manage to clear Jimmy Johnson. Got a big runoff of turn number four into the to the inside of Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott and I had some some rough words to say at each other at Bristol last week, but it's okay. Little side draft to Bill there. Oh, we're about to be three wide. We're about to be three wide. Ooh. It's a little too skaty for that. My apologies, Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, 
man. We're, we're, it's some good racing. It's just like we, we are just doing everything we can just to try to hang on. These guys are, like I said, they're much faster than we are. And, like, you have to kind of stay in the draft and work the draft to, to be fast around here. Can we get to the inside of Jimmy? Ooh, little tap to the back. Not quite a bump and run. He has the momentum off the turn. Ooh, he's kind of protecting that bottom there. I thought about going to the inside, but that would have been really bad. But unfortunately, because we did not take advantage of that, we lose another position. Might be able to do something. Whoa, Ricky Rudd's in the wall. He was not able to keep it out of the wall. <laughs> unlike uh, unlike Sterling Marlin. These guys are making some, some serious mistakes here. Oh, boy. Contact with Jimmy Johnson. Shot up the racetrack there. Overdrove turn number one. Here comes Mike Brown. He could have took advantage of us there. He did not. All right. He looked to our inside, thought better of it. So this is the other problem is like with the game, if you get up behind somebody, it does tend to slow you down. And that's one of those things like I kind of wish it didn't do because we tend to lose momentum because of stuff like that. But. Trying to stay off of Bill Elliott. Don't want any further problems with Bill. He's racing us clean, so I'm going to try to race him as clean as possible. Ooh. Pit stops already happening. Ooh, little slight contact slid up the racetrack a little bit in the in the try in the quad oval, which is par for the course for me. If you ever see me race at Texas, that I do get tend to get pretty skatey there. All right. Bill, you gotta go up the racetrack, buddy. You got a little more room to that. Go up to the wall. All four of our tires are worn, man. We're 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 just we're just we're fighting. <laughs> we're fighting this race car. All right, fuel starting to fuel starting to run down. Jonathan Wolf currently leading the race, getting him some Winston Cup bonus points. We've got some breathing room now, but now we're at that point now. I'm like, we gotta come down pit road. My gosh, hang on to it. Hang on to it. Whew. We got so skating coming off of turn number two that time. We're gonna go ahead and just bring it right on down. All right, easy, easy. Don't get in these guys' way. Oh, Bobby Labonte. <sighs> I tried to, but uh, Labonte had other. Oh, no. Oh no, caution is out. We're stuck on pit road. We're running into Jamie McMurray. I didn't mean to do that. That was that's all AI, Jamie. It wasn't me this time. Oh, so this probably means we're gonna be stuck a lap down. I'm interested to see how many other people are gonna be stuck a lap down after this. So I don't know if Dale Jarrett came down pit road. There was quite a few of us that came down pit road. We got a server penalty here, so we're gonna lose quite a few spots. You know, lost more than we probably should have, but um, we'll see what we can do. We got to see what's going to happen. Oh, okay. Kenny Schrader. <laughs> Kenny Schrader looks like he just locked it up going into pit road. Yeah, he just he, he locked it up, couldn't hang on to it, and that's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I've never seen anyone wreck going into pit road before. We're going to go ahead and stay out. We've already got our tires. And we just got to see what the damage is going to be when we come back green. 27th. Green, flag. go, go, go. green flag's back in the air. Did not have a good restart there. They kind of took off on us. Uh, went the wrong way of the gear. Went the wrong way of the gear. Went the wrong way of the gear. Uh. Oh, 45. Lachik is going to go ahead and go on by. Yeah, we're going to lose some spots here because we didn't have our momentum all the way up. Oh, slight contact with Harvick. Oh, oh, easy, easy. Oh, we are loose, man. This car gets in traffic and it's it's a handful. Boy, okay. 
Yeah, we had a really, really bad restart there. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, the game doesn't start you out in second gear. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, if you're not prepared for it. My gosh, where are you going? Where are you going, Chad? <laughs> Chad Chaffin looked all the way down on the apron. I thought he was going to wreck us for a little while there, but he backed out of it. And he's still got the momentum going. Lachik's holding him up here. We're kind of holding Lachik up. Uh, we're going to see what we can do. We dropped back to 28th. Okay, I, know, I don't need to be on the apron. Don't do that. All right, we're going to see what we can do here. We're going to see what kind of spots we can make up. It, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. We've only got 11 laps to, to really make something happen here. We pulled away from the 145 of Latiuk. And, oh, he caught right back up to us. He pulled away from everybody else just to make that work. So, wow. That 145 is pretty fast. But then again, the draft is pretty extreme here. Okay, see if we can work to the inside of Harvick, inside of Schrader, who is the reason that we're in this debacle, but, you know, we're going to try to give him some room. We're going to battle side by side with Kevin Harvick. He thought about going to the inside there. No, you stay your butt up there, Kevin. <laughs> I didn't mean to get into him that hard, but, okay. There's the 125. Oh, wow. He's dropped way back. He is not for position, though. So he's probably going to... He's probably going to, uh, you know, be able to make good after this race. Get his team some, some much-needed money. Man, Harvick is just all the way up my butt. <laughs> he will not let us go. See, this is the thing about Texas, man. It's just like they're they're just on you. It's like you can't get away from people. Not like other racetracks. I don't. I have no idea who the leader is. Oh, bottomed out just a little bit there. All right into the inside of Ricky Craven, who is also not for position. I don't know who's for position now. I mean, I know who's for position. I can just look at the leaderboard to figure that out. But man, oh, got it's a. Steve Park a little bit there. Nothing too terrible. He didn't lose control or anything like that. Okay, here we go. Here's Amy Hicks. I got really loose going into turn one that time. <laughs> I got see that's what I was trying to avoid. I'm driving it too hard to try to make up the positions. But as I was saying about Texas, it's like you can't get away from people. It's like there's, like, I mean, they're starting to spread out a little bit now, but look how long it takes for them to, like, get spread out. It's not like other racetracks, you know, like Atlanta or, say, uh, oh, man, I'm so sorry. The car bottomed out, and I just completely took out Scott Wimmer. I'm not sure who he took with him. That might have been Jeremy Mayfield. I was so sorry about that. I... I I had no control after, like, the car just bottomed out. Which is weird because the car hadn't been bottoming out all race. But now, during this second run, we seem to be... I don't know if we're on a splitter or what. Or a splitter. There is no splitter. If we're on the valence or, or you know, whatever have you. But you see how it's long it's taking, like... The, you see, there's, like, clumps of cars everywhere. Harvick, please get off my bum. But there's these little clumps of cars everywhere. It's just hard to get away from people. It's kind of like the the package that we have now in in real life NASCAR. It's just like you can't really get away. You can, but it takes a it takes a good bit to start getting away from people, and then it just becomes extremely hard to pass. So we've got four laps to go here. We're well, three to go technically because we're a lap down. We're trying to get around the four of Jeff Purvis. Second place at Bristol. Little tap to Jeff. Yeah. The four has been doing pretty good here. I think he he's one of the ones that got screwed over by that caution. Yeah, he's definitely he's he's a lap down as well. We gotta hang on to this race car, man. <laughs> We're driving it so hard to try to make up some spots. 
We've only got two laps to do it, man. So we're, we're just we're driving as hard as we can. Uh oh, Carlo, Jeff Green, Carlo. All right, white flag in the air. One to go for the leader. I have no idea who the leader is. Looks like we got, oh, looks like we've got the 20, Tony Stu. Oh, we're going oh, into the wall. I don't know what happened there. The car just went straight. That's pretty much sealed the deal. We're going to finish 23rd here. Yeah, we can't catch up to Junior and Tony Stewart now. Checkered flag in the air. Someone has just won this race, and we're going to bring it home. Disappointing 23rd. many drivers led a lap in this race. Well, to be honest, Joe, I'm a little surprised that we didn't have more leaders. Just goes to show that with the right setup and the right strategy, you really can dominate a NASCAR Winston Cup race. Well, that's all the time we have today. Join us again for our next live broadcast of NASCAR Winston Cup Racing right here on the voice of NASCAR MRN. All right, so here are the race results for the race here at Texas. Jonathan Wolf is your race winner. First win of the season, I believe, followed by Ryan Newman. Jimmy Johnson comes in third. Jeff Burton, him, that guy, Jeff Burton, <laughs> in fourth. And rounding out the top five is Bill Elliott. Uh, Rusty Wallace is in sixth. Seventh is Jeff Green. Eighth is Robbie Gordon. How about that? Uh, actually... Jeff Green might have the mover of... No, no, Rusty Wallace is the mover of the race. My gosh. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> Amazing what one lap could do. Anyway, Robbie Gordon in eighth. Ninth is Ricky Craven. And rounding out the top ten is Steve Park. So he did manage to finish in the top ten you, um, after that, all of that. And, you know, starting fourth and everything. So... Uh, here's the rest of the field. Pick out your favorite driver. $245,000 winner's purse. Uh... One caution for two laps, three lead changes, time of race 2037, average speed of 144 miles per hour, excuse me, and the margin of victory about seven tenths of a second. And we had uh, Jones fall out of the race on lap six, so that was the car, that's why I didn't recognize the paint scheme, because it was a, it's a fantasy driver. We had so many cars finish off the lead lap, if you finish one lap down, we had so many of them, we finished 20. But did we finish 23rd? Yeah. We had so many cars finish one lap down. So Dale Jarrett. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Of course. Of course. Dale Jarrett <laughs> finishes 13th. Last car on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin, should, Sterling Marlin finished 14th. So he's probably caught up quite a bit in the uh, in the points. But we'll, we'll check that out here in just a second. All right, so here are the point standings after Texas. We're still in the points lead, but only 34 points ahead of John, who leapfrogged his way, I believe, from fifth to second. Dale Jarrett is in third, 46 points behind. John's only 34 points behind back, mind you. Uh, fourth is Sterling Marlin, 78 points back. And rounding out the top five is Tony Stewart, 79 points back. You have Mark Martin in sixth, seventh Bobby Labonte, eighth is Mike Brown. Moved up himself up one position. He was ninth, I believe, last week. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, ninth is Jimmy Johnson. And rounding out the top ten is Rusty Wallace, 164 points behind. Uh, let's go ahead and go for the awards for the week. Poll number five, I believe, uh, wasn't able to really capitalize on that, but it's Texas. Texas is tough in this in this game. Uh, leading the most laps of the race is Dale Jarrett. Unfortunately, he kind of got robbed out of the... Um, oh, so I see what happened. He was probably one of the first cars a lap down and managed to pass the leader, but the leader was so far ahead, he wasn't able to kind of... He wasn't going to make up one lap, you know, under green anyway. Uh, so Dale Jarrett did lead the most laps of the race. Rusty Wallace moved up most points, most post, po most positions of the race, 40th to what fourth or sixth or something like that. Uh, Dale Jarrett, I forgot already. I know, right? Dale Jarrett has the fastest pace of the race. I'm not even surprised. I'm not even surprised. He was long gone. He was long gone ever since turn number four. He was long gone. Hayes is the rookie of the race once again. I believe he was the rookie of the race last week. No, Nichols. Danny Nichols was the rookie of the Hayes. Uh, Rick Hayes, rookie of the race. I'm looking at Hayes and I'm like, 
But yeah, uh, Todd Hayes and uh, Bill Elliott with the most exciting pass of the race. Uh, rookie of the year still being led by Wawak. Uh, oh, poll number six on the year. I thought we had, I thought we only had four. So, poll number six on the year. I don't know why I thought we only had four. Uh, jackpot five, no changes there. Chevy now extends that lead. We are now 11 points ahead of Ford. Uh, Dodge is in third with 30 points, and Pontiac is in fourth with 25 points. Lap champion was still. Up in the lead, where did Dale Jarrett move himself? Dale Jarrett is 17 laps led on the season. So we've got 46 on the season. Didn't lead a lap in this race, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, sometimes, sometimes things just don't fall your way. It's not the, the, last, the showing that I wanted for the last race with my sponsor, but sometimes things just don't fall your way you know like it's one of those things where i probably should have stayed out an extra lap but i felt the car starting to get extremely loose and i didn't want to wreck it so i was like let me just go ahead and come down get fresh tires not lose uh not lose any advantage on these guys and wound up getting hit from behind by bobby labonte was trying to gather the car back up and you know wound up speeding on pit road um it's just one of those things, and then caution comes out immediately as we're on pit road. So it's just one of those things, like you know, it's you can't predict everything. You can't have a good run everywhere. I wish I would have had a good run, and I think I at least had a top ten car to make it. You know, winning car, no. Dale Jarrett had that in the bag, a hundred percent. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's just like, well. Sometimes the chips don't fall your way. I will say there's a lot more incidents, seemingly. I'll have to go back and watch some of my some of my older videos, but I feel like there's a lot more incidents, a lot more cautions um, this time around, um, around uh, you know, surfacing, surfacing, surfacing around pit stops. So I may have to be a little bit careful. I may have to actually start staying out a couple of extra laps if this is going to start happening because... You know, last season I didn't really have to deal with that all that much. So a lot of people are starting to wreck a whole lot more. A lot of people are wrecking in ways that we don't typically see. I don't typically see somebody wrecking getting onto pit road. <laughs> That's not something you typically see, but there's this has been the year of first. So uh, our first victory at Texas eludes us still in this career mode. I don't think I've ever won at Texas. I don't even think I've ever won in, any, in a, even in season mode. So like I said, Texas is one of those tracks. It's tough, respectably tough. Um, I don't believe I'm like outclassed 100%, but it's respectively, respectably tough. So one of the few tracks, not like Atlanta, where everyone's just extremely fast. You know, you saw like some people try to dive bomb it in there and it did not work out well for them, you know? So, <laughs> you know, they're running, they, they're lucky they didn't hit the wall. If, if if Texas wasn't as wide as it was, yeah, they'd have piled it into that wall 100%, you know. So um, uh, it's just one of those things, man. We're going to have to do what we can and try to have a good showing at Martinsville. Whew, Martinsville is going to be a thing because it's so easy to make contact and, and run over people there because they're so extremely slow in the corners. However, I don't believe it's possible to get a poll at Martinsville maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong there if you've got a poll at Martinsville in career mode on legend dif legend difficulty let me know um you know in career mode now I'm not talking about season mode I'm talking about career mode um but Martinsville is gonna be tough Martinsville is gonna be tough man it's gonna be a lot of just gotta be patient that's, this is one of those things where the low downforce is really going to be helping us out, obviously. But you just it, it's also going to be one of those tracks where you just really got to be patient and really not destroy the race car. Especially since we may or may not have new sponsors there. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the NASCAR Cup Series, NASCAR Winston Cup Series. For NASCAR Thunder 2003 on McLam Racing, if you enjoy these races, I do them every weekend following the NASCAR Cup Series. So be sure you leave likes on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Click the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload. And like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Comment your hypeness down below. And I will see you at Martinsville. <laughs>